Hello everyone, welcome to Great Ones, and well, Botvinnik number two, we will probably have three and four with uh, this Botvinnik dude, after all, three times becoming world champion, I mean, losing matches, winning matches, probably he, we need four videos. Before we start, I, I thought how to divide it, and basically the simplest way is to just do it by his world championship matches. If you remember... He wasn't a really amazing tournament player or scoring amazingly in the tournament. We will discuss a tiny bit more his uh, team scoring, which was actually quite impressive. But before that, I forgot to mention something on the first video, and that is something uh, really amazing. Uh, you know, I mentioned that he founded his school and he had some very notable students, such as uh, Karpov, Kasparov, Shirov, and so on but one of the most amazing thing well two well let's give him the credit one about Kasparov 11 year old Kasparov I, I've added a picture there he said not less than the future of chess lies in the hands of this young man well that was very correct the future of chess the positive sides the destruction of some contact in chess but everything really was in the hands, a lot of things in the head of Kasparov. But more amazingly, it is one of the biggest blunders in assessing a chess player was Botvinnik on Karpov. He said, or first seeing Karpov, he said, the boy doesn't have a clue about chess and there is no future at all for him in this profession. I think that the player that won most tournament in history, I, I I believe, I know he was, I believe he, he still is the player that won most chess tournaments in history, world champion, one of the greatest ones. Well, it's just a big smile, right? That's just raising a big smile. But okay, Karpov just uh, recounts fondly um, his memories with Botvinnik and, well, basically doesn't hold it too much against Botvinnik for sending him to play uh, soccer instead of chess. Well, that's pretty amazing. All right. We will discuss today mainly the 1951 match against Bronstein. Bronstein that finished together with Boleslavsky. They, they shared the first spot in the candidates, 1950. Uh, he beat Boleslavsky in the, their matches and got to play against Botvinnik. It was a very, very famous match. I believe this match is much more famous than all the matches that Botvinnik played against Smyslov, mainly because of the stories behind this match. Uh, Bronstein never said it absolutely clearly, uh, and he said somewhat hinted to it, and towards uh, his later stages in his life, he kind of said that he was suggested not to win the match or something like very diplomatic like this. Well, it might be less diplomatic when some, uh, I don't know, KGB officers or some other people like that suggest you not to win the match. True or not true, I, I believe I, no one can really say today. But there were so many rumors, especially a game that we will see, the 23rd game that he lost, uh, and many other stories about, well, Botvinnik had other part in his life in that direction, uh, but this one was really, really famous, and Bronstein never made it clear that it wasn't like that, and sometimes made it kind of clear that it was other way around. All right, well, I want to go over quite a few games, so, well, we will do that quickly. Let's actually start with a game they played before the World Championship match. This is from... The Soviet Union, 1951. And, well, I have to show at least one game in the Botvinnik variation, right? So, here you go. 1951, Botvinnik variation. 